<laughs> Wonder Woman wants to join us. I'm okay. Sorry, I know you're trying to get off. But I did have a question for you. I do apologize. I do. No, no, it's okay. I'm out on my deck, so I'm not stable or sedentary right now. But um, because it's been raining in Georgia here, um, so I have to dump out all the water so the mosquitoes don't, you know. All right. So here. what's your question, Wonder Woman? Well, my question to you is: I'm 58. My partner is 62. He'll be 63. Okay. My gift to him will be um this year. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers old oh, H&H. SNH green stamps um, or the old dream books that people yeah, in the sure, South used to sure, have. Sure. Yeah. Right. So he, he has a thing like that. He's, we're both very esoteric. Um, right. I've not, we've been together for like 20 something years. Our children are raised, but now we're moving into the part of, I keep my own house. He keeps his own house. Um, I'm looking at, cause he's done all the work and I've done all the work as well. Better than my marriage ever was. Okay. But I'm trying to figure out how do I get to the point if I want to take it to the next level because I have everything I have right now and and everything is good. So I don't want to wreck something that ain't really tow up right right now. Yeah. So let me but be I, clear. Let mm -hmm. me just be clear. A couple things. First off, you two have children together, correct? No, we don't have any children together. He oh. has children from his his marriage. I have children from my marriage. Oh, got it, got it. And, 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 but but and, they all been launched, graduated okay. from grad schools, you, everything. You've been together twenty years in a romantic relationship for twenty yeah. years. Yes. But you live separately. Yeah. Okay? You're fifty eight. He's sixty two, about to turn sixty three. Yeah. So, Wonder Woman, what is your real question? My real question is, how do I make the transition? How do I find out if I want more? If I have everything that I want and, and trying to figure out if I want more because it's been working for 20 something years. So um, we spend more time first, together than we don't, but it's okay. like, okay, sell the houses, get a new house together. Okay, so hold, hold, your, hold that thought for a second. Okay. So first you have to decide what is more, like what does that look like? Does that mean living together? Does that mean buying a home together? Does that mean you know, sure. integrating your lives differently. I, I think that's what you mean by more, correct? Correct. Okay. So, so yeah, because first, if you don't identify what more is, then, I mean, then it's just an esoteric nebulous thing. Um, and yeah. so first you have identified. So now you're asking yourself, if I want more, if I want more. Yes. So let me make a suggestion. Okay. Okay. Here's my suggestion. Maybe you, sh how far apart do you two live from one another? About three miles. And I, okay. I, I mean, yeah. So, yeah. I, mean I moved from I Maryland do... to Georgia, but then within a year, I moved closer to his home, which is like now three miles away. Okay. So here's what I would do. I would do like a trial run, um, play house together. You spend one month in his home okay. living with him whatever you however your day is going you do what you do normally he does what he knows but you literally are together for a constant period concentrated period of time for at least one month in his home and one month in your home just okay. to see how it feels living together now i'm sure you spend weekends together and you do other things but there's a yeah. there's so what a lot now here's where it's tricky because a lot of couples find themselves in experiences known as hold on a second there's a book called Living Together, Living Apart Together. This is becoming a strategy for a lot of people because mm. there's a value in having your uh, you know, separate home. And in fact, there are celebrities uh, I am aware of. Um, there was, um, oh God, Tim Burton and his former partner, Helena Baum Carter. Uh, mm. Helena, okay. uh, they actually had two homes side by side. They had children together and they just went back and they actually created a hallway in between the two homes. If I had enough um, money and enough land, I would love it. I love that. The yeah, idea I that, 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 that's an unusual situation. <laughs> it is. It's um, not for me, but yeah. Yeah. But what you can do is do a, a test drive, a trial run, just to see what it feels like for both of you. And then have a conscious conversation. How did it feel for us living together? Do we work well together? Some, you know, the fact that you're only three miles apart and you probably can't, but at some point, like when you're 75 years old, do you want to just be like, I mean, 
like driving is a pain in the ass, you know, not three miles is nothing. So that's not a big deal. But, you know, going to the doctor's appointments, like, are you going to be like Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn, like I mentioned before, at least they live together. They have their, they work and separate things, but they still live together because yeah. um, you can share expenses with one another. It really allows for- And Jonathan, I, mean, I think we've done, I don't mean to stop you, but I think we've done a lot of things that make us both safe with each other. Like, even though, you know, he has his, I guess his pot of money, his home, yeah. Um, he takes care of his children, even though they're grown now, just like my children. But one of the big asks for me was initially when we met and like, it's been 20 years, but up front, I was like, well, look, I, I, how do you feel about having an insurance policy that I pay for? I've paid for it all these years. So if something happens to him, I know that, you know, at least he was not opposed to the idea. Yeah, um, I mean. By we way, go to doctor's are... appointments together. We just put it on schedule. He has his job. I have my job. We're both still working. So, yeah, those types. We share a lot, but we haven't done the whole putting it all together under one roof thing. <laughs> so, so what? It, well, let's let's explore this. Let's take it a little bit deeper. And even though I was planning on exiting, we'll, we'll okay, go. Well, a bit okay, you know what? We can. I can no, come no, back no, in. No, no, I, no, I just no, found no. you. No, I don't, so, I don't... so, what are you scared of? If you, like, okay. Because you're like asking yourself, do I want to do this? Let's look at it from the perspective of what fear comes up if you did this. Um, perhaps a loss of autonomy, space, and other people's children. Um, okay. Uh, or things that come with the ex-wife. And I'm somebody's ex-wife as well. But I've yeah. always done the, the, the most to make sure that none of those lines were crossed. Um, and because he's a daughter of a, a, son, a father of three daughters. And they lost a child so, initially, you know, a son. So, so him and his three daughters are very, very close. But they're the okay, ages of their no, mother. And I'm not talking bad on her, but I'm just saying, I don't, okay. I don't want it. So, in so let home. me jump in. Let me jump in. So mm -hmm. you're not worried that it will end the relationship if you do this. Your concern is a loss of autonomy and a law and possibly too much enmeshment by yes. being in this environment. If I'm understanding what the fear is, is a loss of autonomy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's interesting. My mother and father were married 66 years before my mother passed away. Mm -hmm. And they lived to, I mean, literally they spent 60, they were rarely ever apart from one another, ever, you know, rarely. I'm still like I my mean, parents, yeah. And so the last 30 that. years, they... <laughs> What I what I witnessed with my mom and dad is my mom had her passions. She was my mom was a, a champion bridge player. She was a champion poker player. I mean, she'd go to Vegas and she'd like I, my lunch money came from her gambling events. You know, like she was a good gambler. She, by the way, three hundred pound woman from the old country. I mean, playing with like sophisticated gamblers because she had the best poker play, face on the planet. That was my mom. My dad. <laughs> He was into my dad being Turkish. He founded the Turkish Israeli uh, community here in Los oh, wow. Angeles. He um, he uh, was Navy Coast Guard. He was Coast Guard Auxiliary. Oh. My father was a Navy man. So they each had their respective passions. So they there there was important to have autonomy. So you have to have your own mutual passions, but also that, excuse me, your individual passions, but also a mutual passion with one another. So certainly when you integrate into each other's lives, you take on the baggage of the exes, okay? That's just a, you know, it's just it's a reality a of life. And I've, I've skirted but that I'm for assume, a long time, so. I'm gonna assume after 20 years, if the two of you haven't figured this shit out by now, then that's, I mean, if, I mean, which I'm assuming well, that, that would be a now. red flag. The thing yeah. is, he's asking and I am the one backing up and I should know by now. So I think you're talking to me more directly because he's like, OK, let's let's go ahead and lay out. We lay out our finances. We look at our, you know, our pensions, um, retirement funds, all those things are like an open book. Yeah. None of that is unknown to either one of us, but I'm just kind of like teetering on like, I don't even know. Look, I don't know if it, if it ain't broke. Should I be trying to fix anything? But he's asking and I don't know how to bring myself around to look at that because I'm not trying to get got. 
I'm not, okay, I'm, so, and not to say that he would, but it's just, it's something in me. So, so I want to share something with you and I'm going to speak to all the women in the audience. Wonder okay. Woman. So it's fascinating because most women think men are the non-committal one. And here you have a man who's like, I want to go to the next level. And it's irony because you're yep. a woman going, ah, I'm putting on the brakes, right? Raising my so, hand, that would so be me. <laughs> yeah. Let me explain something about men to all the women listening. Men like to nest, N-E-S-T, nest. They like to nest into oh. a relationship. Men honestly like the security of commitment. Okay, we are, we're kind of like, there's this, the only, the men who are fearful of commitment in the dating market pool today, and you're not in the dating market pool. No, I'm not. I'm, yeah, I'm not. They're mm -hmm. usually deeply wounded from their past and they have fear that causes them to be commitment phobic. But once men are in a relationship, they're, by the way, women are the ones who initiate divorce 70, 80% of the time. Men, once they're in a committed relationship, now they can get lazy. They can stop being romantic. They can stop. Be, like a lot oh. of things can happen that causes okay. women to go, I, I want to move on from this relationship. But it's fascinating to me. So oh. you have to look. So Wonder Woman, I'm just going to say this. Yeah, give it to me straight. As soon as we wrap up, as soon as we wrap up I want you to take three deep breaths. Mm -hmm. I want you to sit in your patio, close your eyes, put your hand on your heart. Take those big, gigantic breaths. Bre breaths. <laughs> breaths. <laughs> Breath. I, I'm a guy. I have boobs on the mind. <laughs> breaths. And sit with the feeling of what would it feel like to live with him temporarily, one month at a time in each other's homes. Just breathe into that. Okay. And surrender to the possibility that it could be amazing, that it actually brings the two of you close together. Surrender to that possibility, embrace that possibility that it could actually create an environment where the two of you actually connect at a deeper heart-centered level. Okay. Most likely, most likely, um, here's my prediction. Um, you know, I, I most likely it will not trigger your fears but you'll be experiencing a little bit of the concern, the over enmeshment and whatnot, yeah. okay? You can make an agreement. Hey, can we do this back and forth every once in a while for the next I year or two? It. And by yeah. the time I'm 60, I will seriously consider this. I mean, you might want to put a, a timeline saying, and you know, <laughs> would you be okay to give me a year or two you know, yeah. I mean, we've already got 20 years under the belt. I'm not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. Um, <laughs> You know, and and we can do this very consciously. And if you need to, you can get a written contract about the things you talked right. about. Beyond um, what we already have, like, you yeah. know, all the financial stuff is in place and, you know, wills. So, and so power of Chi says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is not about, this is not about fixing anything. This it's is not about broken. Going, I'm just yeah, looking exactly. in order to enmesh yeah, our lives a little bit better or to yeah. the point because i think i owe him that now i don't owe anybody anything by the way but it's been 20 years so it's like okay Rhonda should have get off the pot so that's where it is wonder woman i am but yeah so, so so i'm here to say you know what i look at my mom and dad who spent literally the last 30 years of their lives literally two barker loungers side by side watching oh, yeah. wheel of watching Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune, Wheel of Fortune. And lifetime movie oh. stuff, okay? But mind yeah. you, my parents were, we're talking about people in their 70s and their 80s at this yeah. point. Mm -hmm. They Definitely. were inseparable. They were in, they had their own things, but they were inseparable. Yeah. They were best friends. They, every, I, okay, and let me tell you. that's what my parents had story. before my father one, died. Yes, my mom just turned 80, but it was that whole let thing. Let you, you never saw one without the other. They had their own individual predilections, whatever they wanted to do, it was, but you never saw them. And they were truly a unit. And that's the way I was raised yeah. with that So unit. I want to end on this story and then we're going to go. So I want to tell okay. this story about my mom and dad. This is about 10 years ago. My mom was in her early 80s. My dad was mid 80s. And I came over to their house one day and they weren't watching, you know, Jeopardy and and uh, mm -hmm. and Wheel of Fortune. I go, what's going on? They go, well, the, t the cable is out. It's going to take them a week to fix. They have to rewire all the cables. So they were without television. Well, what did they do? So I I so I, I I go, what have you guys been doing? They go, we're 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 just talking to one another. OK, put mm -hmm. that in the box for a second. 
We're just talking to one another. So a week later, I came back to the house and I go, mom, why aren't you guys watching Jeopardy? And in Wheel of Fortune, she said, we're not done talking to each other. Great story. So the yeah. real love resides in that friendship that, that, you know, that you, you look, wake up in the morning going, I can't tell you what I'm thinking about today. And I know our lives are rather routine and mundane, but the, 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 the a soul of a person takes lifetimes to get to know. You can still be uncovering things for the next 20 or 30 years with this man. So I invite you to take a little test drive to see what it's like living together. Okay. Surrender to the possibility that it could be an amazing experience. Are you with me? I'm with you. Thank you All so right. much. Can I reach Thank in you. and give you a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug? Can you please? All right. Wishing you much success. Keep us posted, Wonder Woman. Will do. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Wow, I love that conversation with Wonder Woman. You know what, folks? This was a brilliant, or not a brilliant, but this was a real treat to be able to look at a couple. And she was asked, genuinely asking herself, do I want to go to the next level? Do I want to go to this level? And she was doing it from a very mindful place. They have a wonderful relationship together. You know, this isn't about it ain't broke, don't fix it. It was more like, do we want to go to another level? And she was being introspective. And I hope my suggestions for her was allow her to, like I said, maybe test drive it to see how it feels. I certainly believe by the time she's 65, I think, just let's just call that retirement age. I think at least at a minimum, they should reach that level by then, but she might reach that level sooner. And what she really can surrender and letting go of the fear and embrace the possibility that could even be better than what it is today. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Post a comment below. I do my best to read them all in the first 24 hours. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And uh, if you want to connect with me directly, check out the links below to schedule a discovery call to see if working with a coach is right for you. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrog of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm asking you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we can all use more love in our lives.